So now if I wanted to write automation, I'd have to select an automation mode. Right now, on, I'm just going to deal with this one track for the moment. On this track, I'm in read mode. So I, I'm going to choose an automation mode. Probably I'll go ahead and choose latch mode so that I can make a change, let it go, and let it ride. But I'm not sure how this is going to sound. So I would like to try it out before I start writing it in as automation. If I roll the transport right now and I start making some changes, it's going to be writing that into the automation graph, which means if I'm not happy with it, I'm going to have to undo it and try something different. And so what I'd rather do is work in a more flexible way. The more flexible way is to use what's called preview mode. Preview mode is available to us in the automation window. So I'm going to bring that up. Command numeric four opens up your automation window. And in this window, there's a button down here called preview. If you want to activate preview mode, you just click on that button. So as long as it's green, you're in preview mode. So what does that mean? That means that if I want to make a change to the volume parameter during playback, I can do it without writing automation and also without being stuck to the current automation levels. So if I had already written automation, I wouldn't be, you know, when I let go of the fader, it was not going to jump back to the underlying automation. So to illustrate this, I'm going to put that first track in volume view so we can see the volume automation graph. So right now I'm in preview mode. What that means is if I roll the transport, I'm going to turn this down so I can kind of talk over it. If I roll the transport and I make a change, the parameter or parameters, plural, that I change are preview. They're not writing automation. You can see there's no automation being written for the automation graph. But it, the fader stays where I left it. Even though that's not where the automation graph is, that's where the fader stays because it's previewed at that level. If I decide I don't like it, so I decide I don't want that at all, I just take it out of preview, it goes back to where it was before. None of it has been written in as automation yet. And if I don't like it, I can just unpreview it and then go back to what was there before. But if I do like it, I can write that in. There's lots of different ways I can write it in. Let's say, just for example purposes, I want to write it in not to the entire track, but just to a portion of maybe just that selected portion. If I want to do that, I make the selection and I use the manual write button here. When you're in preview mode, it's as though you're actively writing automation, even though you're not. So it's like the automation is queued up. So since it's as though I'm, autom I'm writing automation, when I click this button, it'll take the currently writing automation, which is the previewed levels, and write them across that range. So when you do this, it's writing automation to anything that's, quote, currently writing automation and preview it, it accounts for that, right? So if you're previewing, that is considered to be a writing state. So anything that's previewed gets written. So that's one way to use it. This is what I just did is an example of static automation, but I did it using real-time changes, right? I, I made real-time changes in an automation writing mode but I applied it as a static change across the selection. That's one way to use it. It's not the only way to use it, so I'm going to undo that change and show you another option. Option number two is, uh, I'm going to go out of preview and back into it so we can kind of start the whole thing over again. Option number two is, I start the transport rolling, I make the changes that I'm previewing on each of the Why different tracks and all the different me, parameters that I want to have it affect. And then when Why I want to start writing it, I punch in. So maybe I didn't want that to affect the first half, but I want it to come in from this point forward. I punch it in, and those changes are now writing as automation on those tracks. So I'm writing automation on this track, this track, this track, and then Whenever I stop, it stops writing automation. I did that quickly, but the way I punched it in is there's a button next to preview, which is called punch preview. 
And as soon as you click that down arrow, it punches in the previewed information as automation that's in a write mode. 